Good day, everyone. My name is Mr. Chisum, and today we'll be looking at the gross anatomy of the radio ulna joint. So, what do we mean by the radio ulna joint? From the word radio ulna, your mind should tell you that we are talking about a joint that is formed between the radial bone and the ulnar bone. So, the radial and ulnar bone are the two bones that are found in the forearm. There are two bones that are formed in the forearm. So the joint between these two bones is known as the radio ulna joint. They are the joints that are formed between these two bones. The radio ulna joint is divided into two. We have the superior one, which is the one at the superior part here. It is known as the proximal radio ulna joint. So the one that is formed at the upper part, you can see the radio, the, the ulna. This is the ulna, this is the radial bone. You can see the joint that is formed between them. This is the proximal radial ulna joint. Then coming to the lower part, you can see the ulna, you can see the radial bone. The joint that is formed between them at the lower part is known as the distal radial ulna joint. So we will be taking these two different divisions of the radial ulna joint the proximal and the distal one after the other, and we'll be discussing them. So, let's look at the proximal radio ulna joint. This one at the upper part, like I told us, is the proximal radio ulna joint. So, the proximal radio ulna joint is defined as a pivot type of synovial joint that is found from between the radius and the, and the ulna at the upper part. So, remember what I told us about the pivot uh, type of synovial joint. I told us that pivot means that something, as in an articular surface, is rotating at the other articular surface. So, that is, not whenever you say pivot, it means that one articular surface is rotating around the other articular surface. So, let's look at the articular surface so that I will explain what I mean. The articular surface of the proximal radio ulnar joint is you can see the head of the radius. The head of the radius articulates with the radial notch. This is the radial notch of the ulna. So the proximal radio ulnar joint, the articular surface for the proximal radio ulnar joint is the head of the radius and the radial notch of the ulnar bone. So you can see. This is how it articulates. You can see the, how this joint is formed. So the head of the radius always rotates around the other articular surface, which is the radial notch, and this makes it a perfect type of synovial joint. Then the articular surface of the proximal radio ulna joint also have the is also supported by the annular ligament. The annular ligament supports this articulation. Then we come to the joint capsule. We've seen the introduction, the articular surfaces, which I've explained here. The joint capsule. The proximal radio ulnar joint contain a fibrous joint capsule. So the fibrous joint capsule lines the articular surface of the proximal radio ulnar joint. And the inner layer of the fibrous joint capsule is lined by a sheet of synovial membrane. And I've already explained to us what synovial membrane is. So now, as this uh, synovial membrane that lines the fibrous joint capsule, as it moves distally, the synovial membrane lines the articular surface. As the synovial membrane moves distally, it begins to from a recess, that is, it continues on its own, this study. It does no longer line the joint capsule. It continues on its own to form a recess, known as the saxiform recess of the proximal with the ulnar joint. Then the synovial membrane contains the synovial fluid. And I've already explained to us what the synovial fluid does. The synovial fluid is there to lubricate the articular surface, thereby reducing friction that may occur. Then, if you've seen the 
joint capsule. Let's look at the ligament. The ligament of the proximal radio ulnar joint is the annular ligament. The strong annular ligament. The you know what a ligament does? Ligament helps to join one bone to another bone. So if joint means the joining together of one bone to another bone, it means that every joint contains a ligament that actually makes this coming together to be possible and to be stable. So the strong annular ligament is there to, to make this proximal video ulnar joint to be very, very stable. Then if we've seen that, let's look at the movement of the proximal radio ulnar joint. The proximal radio ulnar joint has two movements. Supination and the pronation. Supination and the pronation. This is what I mean by supination. When you flex, when you flex your, your forearm, you can see your palm is lying or is facing off or lying anteriorly. Your palm and the four, anterior forearm is facing off. This is a spine position. Then, if you want to pronate, you can see you pronate. Your palm and the anterior part of your forearm is now lying downward or lying posterior. So, these two movements is the movement of the proximal with the ulnar joint, supination and pronation. Supination and pronation. So, these are the two movements of the proximal with your ulnar joint. So, let's look at the muscles that move the proximal with the ulnar joint. We have for the supination, for the supination, we have the supinator muscle. The supinator muscle of the forearm helps to supinate the proximal with the ulnar joint. Also, the bicep brachii also help to supinate the proximal with the ulnar joint. Then another muscle there is the extensor papi medialis longus, also help to supinate the proximal with the ulnar joint. Then for the pronation, we have the pronator teres muscle, we have the pronator quadratus muscle, and we have the flexor papi radialis. These three muscles help to pronate the radio ulnar joint. Then let's look at the blood supply. The blood supply is to the periarticular arterial anastomosis. The periarticular arterial anastomosis. When we talk of anastomosis, we are talking about the combination of two or more arteries together to supply a particular area or a particular joint. So the articular and arterial anastomosis is formed by the radial collateral artery joins with the radial interosseous artery to form one anastomosis, and the middle collateral artery joins with the recurrent interosseous artery to form another anastomosis. So these two anastomoses, they are called the periarticular arterial anastomosis, and they supply the proximal radio ulnar joint. Then for the next supply to the proximal radio ulnar joint, we have the musculocutaneous nerve, the median nerve, and the radial nerve. So these three are the next supply to the proximal radio ulnar joint. Before we go to the clinicals. Let's see the distal with the ulnar joint. So the distal with the ulnar joint, this is the distal with the ulnar joint, the one that is formed at the lower part of the forearm between the ulnar and the radius. So the distal with the ulnar joint is defined as a pivot type of synovial joint that is formed by the ulnar and the radial bone at the lower part of the forearm. So let's see the articular surface. The articular surface of the distal radio ulnar joint is between, you can see the head of the ulnar here, between the head of the ulnar and the ulnar notch of the radius, between the head of the ulnar and the ulnar notch of the radius. So this is the head of the ulnar. This is the head of the ulnar, and this is the ulnar notch of the radius. So they came together to form the distal 
with the owner joint. Then this the articular surface contains the fibro cartilage. This fibro cartilage helps to hold the distal with the ulnar joint together. It helps in the stability of the distal with the ulnar joint. Then let's see the joint capsule. The joint capsule. The joint capsule for the distal with the ulnar joint, it contains the fibrous joint capsule. Now the inner layer of the fibrous joint capsule is lined by the synovial membrane. And the synovial membrane here has it lies the articular surface of the distal with the ulnar joint, but as it approaches superior, as it moves superior, at the superior part or the proximal part, it stops lining the joint capsule and it continues on its own. This has been saxophone recess of the distal with the ulnar joint. So, it also, the synovial membrane also contains the synovial fluid, which I've explained what the synovial fluid does. Then let's look at the ligaments. The ligament of the distal with the ulnar joint is the anterior and the posterior ligament. The anterior and the posterior ligament of the distal with the ulnar joint. Then, the movement. Let me explain the movement of the distal with the ulnar joint. Unlike the proximal with the ulnar joint, the distal with the ulnar joint can move medial rotation and the lateral rotation. Medial rotation and the lateral rotation. This is what I mean. That the once you pronate, once you pronate the proximal with the ulnar joint here, you can see the ulnar notch of the radial bone moves medially and anteriorly, just like you can see here, crossing the head of the ulnar. And once you supinate the once you supinate the proximal with the ulnar joint, you can see the ulnar notch moves back laterally. It moves back laterally. You can see it. So you can see how it moves medially and it moves back laterally. So medial and lateral rotation are the two movements of the distal with the ulnar joint. Then the muscles that moves this joint are the same muscle that moves the proximal with the ulnar joint. Because this movement is a result of supination and pronation of the proximal with the ulnar joint. So once you pronate and supinate the proximal with the ulnar joint, the distal with the ulnar joint moves medial and the lateral respectively. So the same muscle uh, moves this joint. Then for the blood supply, we have the anterior and posterior interosseous artery at the artery of the distal with the ulnar joint. Then for the nerve supply, we have the anterior and posterior interosseous nerve. These are the nerve that innervates the distal with the ulnar joint. Then finally, the clinicals. The clinicals, the most common clinical here is subluxation or the dislocation of the radio ulnar joints. Dislocation of the radio ulnar joint. And this normally happens at the proximal radio ulnar joint. It's, it is more predominant in children that are less than one year. For school children that are less than one year. So it occurs as a result of forceful uh, pulling of the upper limb. So when a child that is less than one year is for, the upper limb is forcefully pulled up, when the child is forcefully held at the upper limb and pulled up, you can notice that there, there may be dislocation. The head of the radius will dislocate from the from the radial notch of the ulna. And this dislocation is as a result of the annular ligament that is, is holding these two uh, bones together, tears. Because of the forceful pulling, the annular ligament tears. And once the annular ligament tears off, the head of the radius uh, dislocates from the radial notch of the ulna. So this is what happened in the dislocation. And for this to be corrected, the forearm will be flexed and the supinated. Once it is flexed and disupinated, you notice that the head of the radius will go back into its normal position. We've come to the end of this 
video, end of this teaching, I will plead with us to subscribe to my YouTube channel, learn the system grades, and also try as much as possible to comment your questions on this video, like and share this video to your friends. Thank you very much.